you know what? I got a million dollars in tile sitting. I found your ladies. Introduce yourself. I'm Sam and I'm Wanda. And where are you guys at? Wells Tile. Wells Tiles. And if we want to buy something, where can we find you? 1540 West 6th Street, Los Angeles, California. Awesome. And I love your store. I already got to walk it a little bit. But why don't you tell the audience why the store is so unique? Uh, well, we have the largest collection of historic tile and pottery in the world. And uh, yeah, you'll see, I mean, we've got character, we've got uniqueness, we've got rarity. We feature a lot of tiles and um, early California pottery from the 1920s from a lot of the famous companies such as Malibu, Catalina, Claycraft, Calco, and also Gladding McBean. What? Gladding McBean. Glad so guys, I want you to pay attention because sometimes you watch the videos and you say, Renee, you're crazy with the prices, nobody will pay. So this is an LA retailer that sells to the end consumer and you'll be amazed by some of the prices. So this is a bloody pla pla play poo, right? Yes, it is a bloody pla 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 poo. Exactly. No, no, say it correct. This people make fun of me. Gladding McBean. Okay. And this particular pot runs for about $4,800. $4,800 for that pot. Yes, sir. How old is it? This is from the 1940s and this is um, a very rare pot due to the subject matter, but not only that, but the glaze that was poured onto the pot. Wow, if I were to see that, it, it actually has a stamp, Lincoln, uh, okay. Gladding, McBean and Company and what in is Lincoln, it? California. Oh, Lincoln, California, yes, okay. Sir. So I would not think this is a $5,000 pot, guys. As a matter of fact, on storage was, I would say, maybe I'll get 200 for that and you guys would say I'm nuts. See, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. And then I see that display case with super nice color. So awesome. this is a California Fiance Company. Uh, they did a lot of like the early California, you can see here like they did the uh, mission style tiles with the uh, Spanish flair to them. I've never heard of this name before, Fiance, Berkeley, California, 1950, 1915 to 1950. Mm -hmm. Here you guys can pause the video if you want to read up on them. There you go, we're back. So what do these pieces run? Like um, the two little pink ones or purple ones in there? Uh, yes, I wonder what would you say on, on those ones? Uh, I think we have them priced at about, this uh, company isn't as high in demand, okay. but they were very um, well known for their wonderful colors and rich glazes. Uh, you can get a set of salt shakers like this for about $85. Okay, so not too bad. Not but too bad. somebody that kind of likes Fiesta wear probably would like this maybe too? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Fiesta wear is... Uh, kind of tends to be a little more vibrant in yeah. color. Intense. Very rich and intense. Uh, this is a little more subtle. Okay. Well, let's go on and see what else we can find. Oh, these bowls right here. What are they? Are they Fiesta? Yes, these are. I know we have to check because Fiesta, Bow it all looks the same, right? These are Fiesta. They are Fiesta. It seems like somebody yeah. knows his stuff. No, you know what? That's about three or four companies I know, but they, you're right. They do look alike. Yeah, so you can see here how rich colors are with the glazes that were ran on these pots and a lot of them nowadays are used just for display purposes um, anything pre-1940 we were starting to find that there was lead in the glaze and you can kind of tell with a rainbow effect in them behind them we have amazing Spanish Tunisian tiles Spanish Tunisian tiles how you can tell there are three holes on the face of the tile where it was dried onto a prong. And that's how they went ahead and... And are these new? Right. Are they old? I mean, they these look are new. are old and okay. they will run you about $150 each tile. 150 each tile. Yes, sir. So if I do a bathroom wall, just average size, what do I need? Like 50 tiles? I think you need a loan. You need a loan? <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'll go donate some blood. <laughs> there you go, there you go. That's awesome. More... Uh, Brighton this Laguna. Is Brighton Laguna. I'm not familiar with this brand. Brighton Laguna also did tile, which had amazing whimsical subject matter, but they were also known for their colors. Um, Brighton Laguna also kind of had more of the um, hand thrown pottery look to it, so you can see some flaws uh, throughout each of the plates and cups and whatnot. It wasn't as uniform as the Fiesta wear. But and what, what does a setup cost? Because pe people always like to know prices. Yes, yeah, so a set like this, let's see what we have. Oh, you had your hand on the sticker. I think you were looking for it. No, on the bottom, on the bottom. But you think I was right on the sticker. There we go. There we go. 190 so bucks. 190 bucks. Okay, so that's not yeah, too so bad. It's, it's something that's reasonable, that's doable. But this is a tile that they were known for. Very, very rare pieces. <coughs> little pieces of art that was made by a man or a woman. And um, they're really hard to find nowadays, but they were 
very chunky, rich with their glazes. And so was that tile meant to be used in bathrooms or is it just like display pieces? These tiles were actually, you would often find them in the walls of early California homes, um, in the foyer area, the courtyard, you would see, you know, different tiles and such, but the pottery itself was more for what we think display pieces rather than an everyday use. Okay. And what these tiles are running, I see right here, 950 bucks for one tile? Yes. Very rare. Wow. So guys, when you buy these units or you go to yard sales, check your tile. These are one of a kind tiles. They're all one of a kind, okay. Yes, sir. That's crazy, so interesting piece. So these are a little different, are they old? Or, well, yeah, I mean, these the price. These are called vent tiles, and you would often find them in the top of showers, in fireplaces, the sides of the um, home where the fireboxes are, and they would allow air into the area, but they were also done with beautiful rich glazes on them. Nice, 350 bucks for this piece. Yes, and this is a really good price for that tile. Okay. I noticed this one, guys, $1,100 for one piece of tile. Yep. That is that's crazy. That's all. that's all, there's one of the highest in demand. Really? One of, one of the more popular companies. That's amazing. What about that white down there? Do you know anything about this one? This is just a bathroom tile. You would often find these above the uh, bathtub on the inset alcove area. And there were more just for decorative purposes. And what are we looking at price-wise? Um, these are probably about, you can get the entire mural for about $1,200. Okay. And guys, I'm not saying, do you know anything to be disrespectful? That's just so much stuff here. And speaking from experience and having a store, sometimes we just forget, right? That's just too much. I'm like, let me yes. check on that for you. Yes. Like now, you always state knowledge is power. Knowledge is power, but we forget. <laughs> we forget. Yeah. So, Wanda, you were raving and going crazy about this display yeah, case. This so, is, this, this is, her, is your moment. This, this is her favorite, favorite artist. Let's you talk about it. Are. Yes, I'll let her do the honors. Awesome. This is Pillin. Pillin is my absolute favorite artist. Um, she was known for a lot of um, kind of just basic art, and she featured a lot with the birds and um, horses with music instruments. Animals, but it's yeah. very rare to find Killen nowadays. A very small piece of pottery here would run you probably six, seven hundred dollars. Wow, how about her big pieces like the... Um, the big pieces like this on the upwards of five, six thousand dollars. Wow, and how come you guys have so much of it? You're just hunting it down or did you buy a collection? We were lucky enough that a private collector decided to feature his collection with us. Okay. And he'd been collecting for years and years. Okay. Um, so we were really lucky to have him in here. And she was originally from Poland and came uh, later to move into LA. And her husband also started to do some of the pottery with her. Interesting, interesting. And it's different pieces on top there, right? That's a different artist. That's a different artist, yeah. Yeah, she's, Warner doesn't want to talk about that artist, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> but also Pillin behind us here, you can see that these are tile plaques done by Pillin. Okay. What's the artwork go for, the big tile? Uh, artwork's a, a lot more expensive. So something like this would probably be about uh, 8500 8500 for a larger piece like this. I think Warner just told me in a nice way, don't ask Renee. <laughs> we like to call this place a museum where you can buy things and walk home with them. That's awesome. Those are the best kind of museums. Yes. And then we got all kinds of cool tile along the wall. We already looked at a lot of tile, but this tile is a little different. It's California art tile. And I'm assuming he's old? Yes. So what? these are 1920s, 1922 to 1956, they were in uh, business. And uh, you know, you've got your batch elder, you've got your clay craft, and California art tile is kind of made to mimic that. It's not as in high demand as I would say batch elder or clay craft, but still there's money to be made. And what do these pieces go for, like these little? Uh, these little scene tiles, I believe those could go maybe about $400 each. 400 each? Yeah. Now ladies, I hear you say a lot 1920s and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. So is that when the height was for tile? Because it yeah. seems like everything was 1920s. That's what we call early California. So there's a really big demand for early California um, tile, which is 1920s into the 30s specifically. They did a lot of the they Spanish did. bungalows, arts yep. and crafts homes, missions, craftsman style missions. homes. You've seen them a lot of uh, train depots, public buildings, um, post office, mm -hmm. where all of the beautiful tiled murals on the walls, those were all early tile uh, early California tile companies. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, and then if I find tiles from the 60s and 70s, does that have value? Is it kind of like we're over? We call that groovy. 
Groovy? Yeah. I mean, they're, they're still, you know, it's just in the eye of the beholder. Right. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these tiles are being lost in time because of modern updates with style and design. Buildings are being torn down. Okay. And so with that, everything is being thrown away and torn down. Um, there is a one man that we know of, uh, one of the only men in the country, who goes in and he historically salvages the tile okay. out in order for it to relive. So a lot of our items that we feature here was salvaged by that gentleman. And, and, and we can say that's Eric, your husband, it right? It's Eric. It, it's funny, it's like, it's a man that I know of, I heard of him. It's a secret man, yeah. you know, and they fly him around the world, um, you know, to um, take out the historic tiles. He's done Catalina Island, he did the Wrigley Estate, um, he's worked for the Ringe family. Avery Fisher, the Fisher, Body by Fisher. <laughs> and just for the record, guys, so these are actually neighboring stores next to each other. And we did another video that's already out by now with Eric. But we just made separate videos because they're two stores. Even though they have some of the same items, they're just such cool stores and they deserve their own videos. But it's okay. We feature you, items. You're married to that special guy. <laughs> I'm a lucky girl. <laughs> <laughs> punk rock love. Yes. Punk rock love, yes. <laughs> yes. And I really love those prints up there, but they're new, right? No, these are old. They're old? They're 80s, I believe. Yeah. Are they? Oh, 30s, actually. They look 80s to me, but they are actually. And they're only 160 bucks? Yep. That is so cheap. So I think that you should get a couple of them while you're here. Yeah. I'm a poor man. For one chance. <laughs> I can't believe this. I'm going to have to research this guy online because his artwork is 1931. His name is Edward Northridge, Arabia series. The colors in person just look absolutely amazing. I love the Titanic piece up there. Oh, it's actually SS Rose City. So if you guys have, oh, actually, no, we never did a video, but I bought the storage locker from the SS United States and I got all kinds of stuff. Uh, oh, cool. oh, I got architectural That's stuff from awesome. that too, from the ships. So I'm just looking around because I'm like a kid in a candy store. I always see new things, new pieces. Oh, you want to tell us about those spiral pieces back there? Is it something to talk about? Yes. It, it looks a little different. Maurice Heaton, Switzerland. Which one's that? The ones up there. Oh, oh, these ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, Murray Seat in Switzerland, Valley College, New York. Uh, so they're, yeah, they're enameled and fused decorated glass. Probably made 1950s or 60s right and in there. Do you know what these go for? Or do we got to check the stickers? Uh, we'd have to check the stickers awesome. on these guy, but. Okay, it's locked right now. Yeah. But you guys look them up. Look them up online. More cool people. This is interesting. Check these out. Yorana Saitekva, 1957. She's still alive. Berkeley, California. Pinched porcelain, hand decorated, 90s. It's a different look, but kind of cool. characters, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Given that 60 years, people will go crazy. Wow, there's more of that cool artwork. The colors are just really unique. I just bought three Leroy Neiman's too, guys, so maybe I'll do a video. I don't know yet. I got a good deal. I bought them from Day Festa Auctions, actually. Is that Fiesta? That's Fiesta Wear, isn't it? Yes, that is Fiesta Wear. It's all Fiesta Wear. You guys know about Fiesta Wear. We talk a lot about it. And then the big pots, is this a more Fiesta Wear or yes. you said Bauer earlier? Uh, are these Bauer? These yeah, are Bauer, these okay. Are Bauer. Another great common company, California Pottery, things like that. Are these uh, Gladding McBean as well? They look Gladding McBean with this yes, blue tile. Yes, they are. So if you look in here, you can see um, the variation in the glazes and how mm. it starts to get grazing throughout the years, showing its age. Okay. But the best part is how you can see that glaze drip down. Oh yeah. That okay. clay pot on the inside. Okay, I'm not as excited as you are about the about that. Oh, it's but yummy. It is okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another good thing to point out. Um, how we can tell if a pot is broken. Oh, I see it here. It looks cool. I'm sorry for interrupting. No, you're good. There's there, there the see, that looks cool, yeah. yeah. Doesn't that look like icing on a cake? <laughs> it, it does. Now it, you uh, find it yummy, too. Yeah, yeah now it looks cool. There you go. So how can we tell if a pot has been cracked, Samantha? So sorry. You're going to give it a little... Hear that noise? Yeah. So this is an unbroken pot. Okay. If it were if a it broken breaks. pot or there was a crack, it, you'd hear a nice ring to it. It would be a thud. Oh. There'd be a nice thud. Okay. So none of these so, pots are cracked because you'll get it more still money. rings okay. like a bell. Okay. What that means, um, if it's a cracked pot, it jeopardizes the integrity of the pot itself, <laughs> um, which means down the road you could run into some separation of okay. you know the material. But these pots actually are not used. They're actually called oil jugs. They are not used to put plants in. They're more for a collector who would want them on each side of the stoop out of the front door. Okay. Um, to kind of add that historic element to maybe an arts and crafts or craftsman style home or early California Spanish bungalow. I'm afraid to ask, but how much are they? Okay, so this 
Small is a modest uh, price of twenty five hundred. Twenty five hundred, mm -hmm. guys. Yes, and this one as modest. well is twenty five. Do your research. Knowledge is power. I tell you all the time. <laughs> Welcome to the creepy dungeon. All right, guys. So Sam and Wanda took me down to the dungeon, and I told people I'm coming. So make sure I get back up, okay? <laughs> But guys, this is amazing. Oh my God, you have more and more stuff. It never ends. <laughs> and then, so let's go to these wood boxes first because didn't you say you had the largest collection of? This of tile, historic tile and pottery, yes. yes. And these crates are actually full of unset tile and that's very important, the unset part. These are original 1920s Malibu Tile Company. And um, the fact that they've never been set is very rare. Usually we're taking them out of concrete walls or things like that. So it's basically brand new. It's never been sold. Yes. It's like dead stock, right? So this was an inheritance from the Malibu Tile Company family. Okay. A granddaughter inherited um, all of the tile. And so we had it brought over in semi-trucks. Huh. And we feature this is the largest collection known to date of unset Malibu tiles. So just for layman's term, if somebody wants to realize if the, a tile has been unset, how can they tell? Is it an easy way to tell? There is no concrete, and you can still see the glaze around the edges where okay. it's dripping off. There's no concrete, there's no adhesives, anything like no that. No saw marks where they've taken the concrete off the back. So, and I'm stupid question, obviously I'm assuming unset would have more value, right? Absolutely. Okay. So, you know, in, in some pieces, stuff has more value if it's actually been used and stuff like this. Yes. But on tile, on set, dead stock, it's the, good, right? The best value is in quantity. Okay. Whenever you can have quantity of historic tile, that's where the money is at because then you have enough to do something with. Okay. One piece of tile like this would run you about $30. So that, that is 30 bucks, And then yes, yours sir. looks a little bit fancier. Yeah, so these ones have the different colors. These maybe $45 each. This is known as a pillow top tile. Okay, you can tell by the, the way that it's kind of shaped. It's, Malibu is only in business for a few years, but they were known for their master glazes. As you can see here, the glaze drips down a creamy clay tile. It almost looks like a piece of candy or possibly... Icing on a cake. Mm -hmm. That's funny. <laughs> really and then just guys, look, so these crates, how many tiles does one of these crates hold? Oh my goodness. Uh, depending on the size of the tile, like uh, these are, these are uh, what, three by threes? Yeah. Uh, so roughly a hundred pieces per crate? Oh, yeah. yeah. This, like this crate here would be about 200 pieces. Of 200, oh, cause it's yeah. double. Yeah, it's okay double. guys, so just the math, when you talk about volume and why this store is so awesome, it's about $8,000 a crate, okay guys? So when you go down this wall, we got five high. So, and not everyone, but roughly they're five high. Each row is $40,000. So when you do the math, and you guys know I love math and quantity and stuff like this, it's like 40,000, 80,000, 120, 160, 200, 240, 280, 320, 360, 400,000. Right there, we went third through the row. The bottom is even higher, so we'll probably have 10 high. I mean, you guys know I love numbers, I love quantity, I love wealth. And, you know, that's why I tell you all the time, if you're poor in America, it's your own choice. This is the greatest country in the world. If you're willing to work hard and find these deals and just put the effort in, I mean, it's so dark, but it's just nothing but nothing but rows of tile. But I tell you, that's why I try to motivate you. Once you get in business, you put in the work, you know, you work those extra hours, you skip the bar, you skip the drinking, you skip anything else, or you just make it your priority to succeed you'll come across these deals and one day you'll wake up and I bet you these people don't install like this, but one day you wake up and you go down to your basement and you're like, you know what? I got a million dollars in tile sitting and you can do it. So I hope the whole point of these videos is to motivate you, to educate you and show you that other people are doing it. So if they can do it, why can't you? The only difference is getting up, right? I started with absolutely nothing and I don't have a million dollars worth of tiles, but I like to say I don't have a million dollars worth of tiles yet. I see a lot of bathtubs and sinks. Are these like, I mean, these are old, I'm assuming, right? Yes. Most of them are old, but we do deal in also reproductions. So okay. there is money to be made in the new as well. But all of these, uh, most of them are like 1920s, some 1950s. You get into the, uh, you know, like the American standard low boys. That's okay. what we call these lower toilets. So what are we looking for toilet like that? Uh, so this one's about eight ninety nine. Okay, and that's a time period. It's not a reproduction, right? Uh, no, this is time period. This is about 1930s. 1930s? Yeah. Wow, that seems like it's really low. It does not look comfortable. <laughs> Gotta be real short for that one. Yeah. A real low boy. A low, low boy, yeah. But back then, people were shorter and skinnier here. Yep, they were smaller. The doors were smaller. Everything was smaller. Back okay, then. I love this corner right here because this is something my users can find on a consistent basis. I've, no, I've found them on a consistent basis. But what do you guys get for these windows? Uh, 
they depend. So, you know, these are all old. You'd find these in like 1920s homes. Uh, you know, let's say this small one here probably go for about $350. Okay. And then, you know, you put in, you know, you can put some work, to maybe $40 each pane if they're broken, it costs to repair. And then uh, you got these bigger ones. They sell for about $5.99. Well, and, and we're holding a piece for Nick in the blue. How much is Nick paying for that? Yes, Nick is paying about sixteen hundred for that piece. And is it does it have to do because of the color? No, no color doesn't matter because uh, usually people will redo them anyway, so they'll sandblast and powder coat them and, and redo them. But um, yeah, just the size of that one, and then the two 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 little pieces will open, and then there's side lights on those. So that's kind of a special piece. Okay, so Nick, congratulations <laughs> on your buying. In case you happen to watch this video, and it's pretty big, but Nick is paying sixteen hundred dollars. Oh, look at this one. That's kind of cool. Like a Roman decorated toilet. Versace. <laughs> Versace? Yeah, there you go, Versace. Would, nobody's buying these wooden toilet seats, are they? Um, yes. Actually, yes. Really? <laughs> you can't find them. And, and you just don't find them anymore. Shockers, what's the price? Uh, well, I don't know. How much would you say this one's for? Every 400 it depends. Yeah. Okay, guys. So pay attention, okay? If you find these old toilet seats, and also is this uh, copper brass? I would think it's maybe a brass. H yeah. Brass. So H brass wooden toilet seat in the right setting, you can get three four hundred dollars, which means you know we throw it away, but that means a dealer on the swap meet will buy it from you and will probably be more than happy to give you fifty or hundred. It depends on who's set on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be extra. This is a really cool window right here, twelve hundred dollars. Little wall piece. Yep. This is a, a mirror right? made to look old. Yes, and it's got these cute little Spanish, uh, what we call the the shutters, storm shutters kind of deal. Yeah, Maybe I'm not into like reproductions. Yeah. Original. <laughs> Original so, only. Original so, or go home. Exactly. So we're just walking around. We're finding cool pieces. These lamps are cool. They almost look like a hair salon, like the old hair dryers, but they're obviously not, right? No, I think that they were made for uh, lights at one time, but uh, huh. you pop a light into the middle of there. So. That's a really cool, unique look. Lots of chandeliers, lots of gates, lots of doors. A couple months ago, we did a different video. Um, well, I don't know what, how long we wait for this video, but we had a lot of this architectural stuff. But guys, pay attention to your architectural stuff. It's blowing up. Is that windmill original? It is. What time yeah, period? So that one, maybe 1950s, Wanda, would you say? Uh, probably about 60s, 70s, 60s, and it has the weights that help it to function properly, and they would be used to generate energy. Okay. Oh, so you actually generate energy with this? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And what does that run? This one would run you probably about $1,600. $1,600. That's cool. And it's a really unique piece for the front yard. So I noticed you had some boxes of newer tile right there. That looks really new. So yeah. tell us about that. So these guys, let's take a look at one of them here. Yeah. No vo vo decor crystal. So these are kind of like a matte black. Uh, typically you'd see these for maybe like bathroom tiles or floor tiles, something like that. Um, but these would typically run you about fifteen dollars each, okay. and then you can, you know, there's maybe about sixty, seventy in each box. And that's just something new reproduction, kind of for the old look, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's see what other goodies we can find. So, so much tile, guys. Remember, a lot of these tiles start at twenty-five bucks a piece. Somebody get out the calculator and just calculate the whole value of this little basement. This would be like. So I tell you what, if you guys see me in storage wars next time and they open up a room full of tile, you know who's gonna buy it because I'm gonna be in the tile business. Look at these amazing pieces. Prices, I'm sure, are good too. Guys, I've been doing this business for 30 years, and I always knew about Catalina tile and certain tiles. But that some of these plain color tiles, I mean, you constantly learn new stuff, and that, that's really important. That's why I tell you guys, you know, instead of watching television, watch YouTube videos. Watch stuff that will educate you. Because the more knowledge you have, the more power you have. The more power you have, the more money you make. And the more money you make, the more you work, I guess. I don't know. I have nothing after that part. I guess you have freedom, right? You have bills. You have bills, yes. <laughs> but, you know, money does get freedom, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people always try to criticize when people are hungry for money, but it does buy you a lot of freedom. It gives you the choice. <laughs> like, trust me, nobody tells me to be somewhere if I don't want to be there. Where, unfortunately, some of my friends, they have to clock in. Yeah. So these are just really, are these new? These are reproductions, I'm assuming, right? No, actually, these are old tiles, all of them. And these are... Um, what you would use inside of a bathroom okay. and so the, what makes these tiles so important is if you have a plumbing issue in a historic home that's being um, preserved for a historic society and you need to replace four tiles these companies are out of business and they're lost in time 
Okay. So this makes this priceless. This small little stack of tiles here in order to restore that wall to put that home back to its historic state. So what do these tiles run per piece? Uh, and at first, how old are they? Uh, these are probably about, uh, on this side here, about 1924. And then these are um, a little bit newer here. But they start about $7 each because they're known as field tiles. Mm -hmm. And they're by companies that aren't as high in demand. Um, American and Caustic Tile Company and also Hermosa. Actually, I can see doing a bathroom. Like this color is just... Isn't that a great... Oh, I don't want to trap it because I'm holding the camera at the same time. But the color, like, I don't know how good it comes on video, but it just really, really pops. And here's the kind of Franciscan, Terra Grande, Entrepaseo, USA. Very no. good. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? You got it on the first shot. Very it, it, good. You know, it doesn't matter. People make fun of me if I just try to speak regular English, so it doesn't matter. No, you know, <laughs> let them get a, give a shot at it. Check out the colors. Like, if you guys can see it, I hope it comes out in a video, and sometimes it does. These colors, like, totally pop. Like, honestly, if I were redoing a bathroom right now, I'm like, all right, fine. That's a lot of money, but I'm paying $7 a tile. Like, I can see why the values. The white ones, honestly, I don't really get. You know, to me, new, old. I guess if somebody just wants it to be timepiece correct, but the look doesn't do absolutely nothing for me. But these tiles, absolutely amazing. It's probably one of the best things I've seen in the store that I just I just really love the color. I mean, Over okay. here are the bathroom fixtures. Okay. And, um, you know, they're very rare as well. But the thing about them is trying to remove them once they have been set, they're set into concrete and they've been there about 100 years. So mm. um, to remove them is, you know, a very hard, detailed process. But once it's done, then it can be reset in the historic home in huh. order to complete the project. And so a lot of these pieces are, I see, like 40, 50, up to 100. So that's actually yeah. not that unreasonable for something yeah. that's 100 years old. No. And you kind of get that story. I like buying a lot of old coins because I would think I have Roman coins, and I'm like, man, you know, 1,500 years, somebody did business with that, you know? So it's just, <laughs> love the history. Yep. Ooh, bad, very bad exercise equipment. You guys know that's not my thing. It's like, that's how you get heart attacks. I know there's going to be 20 guys in the comments right now. Renee, you really should exercise more. I'm like, nah, I'm okay. I ride a load of truck. But they're actually really cool. Exercise cycle. What are those, like 1940s? Yes. And, I mean, people don't really, I mean, I guess if you want to decorate a home time period-wise, it's kind of cool. Well, uh, spin classes came back a lot. And so uh, people like to use these as window displays. But we also do... Um, movie and film industry so oh, okay, that for, makes sense. for movie rentals they've been out a few times but they actually function <laughs> the handle pulls backwards the seat rises up and it's kind of a riding a horse type of experience i guess i like to call it 1940s torture devices <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how much are they worth by the way let's just ask About 500 dollars each 500 a piece guys yeah. if if i find any i'll give you a discount in working condition <laughs> in working condition okay and lots of lights lots of lights some more footage, so many doors, lights. People just love it. There's a lot of cool stuff in here. And we learned something new, which is amazing. I love that tile. I think we'll have to go buy some tile. Well, ladies, that was an amazing store tour. I can be here for hours, but I got to go get my uh, Newman's. Well, thanks for coming Newman's. to see us again. Yes. And we can't it was a wait to see what treasure you find and bring us next. Awesome. And also, one more time, where can we find you? 1540 West 6th Street, Los Angeles, California, 90017. Awesome. Thank you, lady. Thank you for the <laughs> Thank knowledge. You. Much Thank appreciated. You. Blessings. Blessings.